My name is Robert Bailey Jr. I play Chris Minetto. My name's Owen Yeoman and I play Benny Gallagher. I'm Sabrina Guevara and I play uh, Dr. <laughs> Abby Frazier. <laughs> I mean, as you guys explore these characters with it, it being a new series and everything, is there anything you find you're surprised to learn about yourself as actors and actors as you start to learn more about them as characters? Well, I mean, we've only done the pilot, so we actually, on Monday, we go back and start the, uh, the rest of the season. Uh, but we've got, but we, yeah, exactly. But we, we got the script, and uh, I, I it's hard to say without giving anything away, but I, I will say that I'm surprised at how much we're doing so quickly. I think that's one of the exciting elements of the show is we just kind of dive in and keep throwing stuff at you, uh, and that really affects all of our characters in different ways at different points throughout the season. Um, but yeah, it, it, I'll say that I, I've been pleasantly surprised about uh, where things are going. And what that means as far as what I'll have to do as an actor uh, already. So yeah. I think we're, we were just talking about uh, you know I think we're in a different era of television now, like streaming audiences and being able to binge watch things. People are impatient for information, and you know the pace of the show has been incredible. You know straight away we are. I, I think there are a lot of mystery shows that suffer from sort of trying to eke out mystery too long. I think we've all seen those shows. It's like come on already, we just need to get to the bottom of it. The beauty of that is that you know the mystery and the sci-fi element. That's just one facet of the show. You know we have a very relatable family drama at its core. It's a very character-driven show. And there are a lot of discoveries for us where I think every script that we've had today, we're like, wow, we're already moving to here. Yeah. And this is, you know, revelatory for my character. And this is this is amazing. So I think the pace and the speed will satisfy a TV audience now that is used to information quickly, you know? And I think that makes for more powerful storytelling because it moves things on. How much of the mystery do you guys know ahead of time? Yeah, Some of it. Yeah, we yeah. know. We know I, and I, I think yeah. uh, Tara and Michelle hinted at the different, different parts of it. Because as it relates to our character, we have different information. So I think if all of us pull together, we should probably get, we could, like, figure out the yeah. whole season. Uh, and I know, I know a bit of, like, very broad strokes going out a few seasons if we uh, are lucky enough to have that. And then a bit more about this first season, specifically more about my character. Uh, but I, I have some ideas about where we're going. And I, I, I think uh, actually I was, I was visiting. And Tara was just kind of talking, and I was like, "What?" And she was like, "Oh, we hadn't told you already." And I was like, "Yeah, no, totally. I knew. It's cool. We keep go keep going." Um, and so yeah, it's, it's it's really exciting actually. But that was an ugly lie, right? You yeah, 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 totally. No, I didn't know at all. <laughs> what's been what's been interesting about Tara and Michelle too is that they are very very aware of current affairs and things and the world in which we're living in and the things that are impacting our world at the moment and it, it, and also the, they're very sensitive to who we are as individuals so you know when we come to the pilot it's us coming to these characters now even by episode two it feels like oh this is a little bit of Robert in here this yeah. is a little bit of Sabrina in here and I feel like they're already absorbing those kind of elements of our character into those characters yeah. and then as it kind of progresses that sensitivity and awareness of a real relatable world that we're living in with real human beings I think is hopefully going to keep uh, keep that interest week over week. Right. Yeah, by episode two, uh, Chris is already like a super cool guy, so you'll notice that. Yeah, just like you. Yeah, exactly. We don't really know that much about your characters. Right, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit? Yeah. Sure. Uh, so uh, Chris is one of the officers on the South Hill Police Department that Chief Joe runs, and uh, he's known Chief Joe most of his life, and, and really admires her. So it's kind of part of the reason why he became a cop. Um, and he happens to be on site when uh, she comes across Piper, the little girl that this entire mystery is around, and as a result gets dragged into this entire conspiracy that really affects everyone's relationship with each other in the small town where everyone kind of knows each other. Um, and so it changes how we relate to ourselves and, and them, and uh, we all just kind of band together for this little girl, but we don't entirely know what that means yet. And it's really going to change quite quickly for all of us. And I play Benny Gallagher, uh, who's the third member, lesser known member of Oasis and the Gallagher Brothers. Uh, <laughs> that's not true, but uh, it just amused me. Um, but he, he's an investigative journalist, and um, I think it's interesting because he sits sort of slightly apart from the other characters. These guys have, you know, familial relationships with our central family. Benny's a little bit more of an enigma and sort of occupies a bit of a grey area, and certainly in the pilot, you're not quite sure where his allegiances might lie and where it's tempting to see him and like, oh, that guy must be the bad guy, because you know, he's charming and he's British. So obviously... <laughs> 
British guys are always bad guys. But I, I don't think it's that simple. I don't think life is that simple. And I think, you know, moving forward, there's some big revelations about where he is going and where his allegiance is lie. I play uh, the pediatrician that's been the pediatrician for uh, Joe's daughter for, since she was born and a town pediatrician. And I'm the one who investigates or does the, the health work up on the little girl when they find him. And then get pulled into the intrigue as we try to figure out what her memory loss is or what her memory loss is due to. Oh, and I'm Joe's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here at, obviously, the mecca of nerd culture oh, yeah. fandom yeah. and everything. What is something you guys nerd out about that you might be surprised? Star Wars. Star, Star Wars. Yes. Star Wars. It's done all the time. Yeah. Star Wars the original. Like, four, five, six. Yes. Like, the other ones. Uh, I, I, I actually wasn't sure uh, what to say until earlier. And I was like, oh, I totally do this. That is obviously a nerdy thing. Um, I, I'm a gamer, and I play Halo. Um, quite a bit but in full uh, Master Chief <laughs> co I have, I have this yes yeah exactly it does it's emotional um, and so I have a full Master Chief helmet I have gauntlets I have the whole gear and I play the game in it which doesn't actually help but you feel like you're right in there, you know? Yeah. Especially for the gauntlet. I think I have pictures on my Instagram. And what's strange is Robert actually turns up to table reads still wearing it. Exactly. You know, he really takes it beyond. And I'm winking at Michelle and Tara like, don't we want to include this? But they can't see because I have a visor on, obviously. But when I'm in the moment, I don't really think of that. So This was a man who earlier today just gave the quote of the day and was like, what would you what would you like to, what item would you like to pick up at Comic-Con? And you were like, oh, yeah, Jon Snow's fur coat. Because swag, I swag. Was that was like the if answer. They, if, and your survival. Swag, if you yeah. if you had one item, or you, if you had anything in a survival kit for Comic Con. And, and, uh, and, and, and yes, say Terminator. Well, I mean, like I'm slightly obligated, aren't I? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's. It's funny, like, I I just, I love this celebration of fan culture. For me, Comic-Con is just a wonderful way of, like, getting a direct interface with fans. For me, the biggest treat of it is to be here, to get that face-to-face -face feedback with people who just love our industry. They love movies and love what we do, and it's a really rare opportunity to sort of directly interface with the, the people who this is all for, you know, the fans.